Hey guys, Ginger here. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in October. So October started out pretty strong and I had a very ambitious TBR but as the month went on and as the school year went on things got hectic. I am currently on my teaching block, so if you don't know what that is, it's, it's pretty much like student teaching, but I only do it for five weeks, and I only have to go for half a day. But don't let that fool you into thinking it's not difficult. Um, I would actually say it's probably more difficult than student te teaching is going to be because I am also working around other classes and work and making sure I have time to relax and honestly my relaxation time has not revolved around reading lately so that's why at towards the end of this month I just did not read like anything. So I read a total of five books in October which isn't the best but it's not my worst month and I think all of the books were between a three and five stars so I didn't read anything horribly bad but I read a lot of thrillers and mysteries because it was October and that was really what I wanted to read. So I guess I'm just going to talk about them in the order that I read them in and then tell you guys the ratings and what I thought about them and hopefully November will be better but I have a feeling it's going to be worse because I just started my teaching block at the end of this month and it goes all the way to Thanksgiving. So I don't have a day off until the ones that did before Thanksgiving because I will probably actually work on Thanksgiving. So that's what's going on. And now let's just talk about the five books that I read in October. So the first book I read was actually an audio book and that was The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. And I kind of upset I didn't get to this sooner. It was really good and the audiobook kept me really intrigued and I'm glad that I listened to it on audiobook. I think I would have enjoyed it just as much if I read it physically. I just don't own the book and it was on the Libby app or no it was technically on Hoopla which is through my library and so I decided I was going to pick it up and read it because I was looking for a book that wasn't like super long but that was going to be engaging and I think this one was about 10 hours but I listened to it on 1.75 speed so it took a little less time than that but I just kind of listened to it throughout the month while I was driving to school while I was at work uh, I think that's where I started it and actually let me make sure I have the rating correct in my mind by looking at my Goodreads. So okay, I rated this book between a 4 and a 4.5. This is about a girl or a woman that is agoraphobic. She does not leave her house. She's afraid to leave her house and she pretty much stalks her neighbors. She ph photographs them in their houses. She knows everything about what goes on in their lives even though she's just in her house. And one day there are some new neighbors and she ends up befriending the wife in the family and then she um, witnesses something that has to do with this lady and it kind of unravels her and makes her life as she knows it very difficult and very uh, intense. So that might not have been the best description but yeah, this had two twists in it that one I didn't see coming at all and then the other one I at first I didn't see it but then as the story progressed about two or three chapters before the twist was unraveled I had figured it out. So but you know I didn't know it off the bat so that was good and the twists were really good. The writing style was really good. The pacing was good. I just overall it was really a great thriller novel and I see why a lot of people like it and again that's why I wish I would have read it sooner because it was really good and I kind of missed the buzz around it and I, I don't think I gave it a five out of five stars because there were times where I felt a little disconnected just because of the pacing of the audiobook was 
it, it would go into high points where I was completely engaged and there were points where I could multitask and I was kind of like not super worried about the story. So those little parts that just didn't make me feel like I had to be super engaged the whole time I think is what made me make it a 4.5 but yeah I really really enjoyed it so I recommend it totally if you're looking for a good thriller that has an interesting premise that I've not personally read about before I would definitely pick it up. And then I'm not going to talk too in depth about these two books because I did post a separate video about them where I did a reading vlog and I read these two books, The Seven and a Half Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I gave five stars, and The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, which I gave 4.5 stars. I talk a lot about them in that vlog, so definitely go check it out, but I pretty much compared them and went through and decided which Evelyn was the superior one so but I did really enjoy both of them almost equally so I would definitely recommend them if that's what you're here on this uh, wrap up for but definitely go check that video out if you want to hear more about what the books are actually about. And then I participated in Spookathon and I had a lot more books picked out to read in Spookathon and I only got to two of them. I had five picked out for each of the prompts and I got to two books and actually now that I'm thinking about it, the one book I didn't even have picked out, but I wanted to read an audiobook to coincide with me trying to get into the reading mood since I was at that, at Spookathon time, I was already on my decline of reading. So I thought an audiobook would help, and it did. I probably would have only read this one book if I hadn't had that audiobook. So the audiobook that I read was The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay, and this was a short book so it was good for me to read and get through quickly and it was messed up in my opinion like there were some gruesome things that happened that I wasn't expecting and and yet it was like wholesome with the family aspect like how tight-knit the family was and so pretty much what happens in this book is we have a family where there are their two dads and their daughter Wynne so who they adopted and they decided they need time away from the real world so they go out to this cabin that's pretty remote secluded and they just want to have a nice getaway and just enjoy their time together as a family and then at the very beginning of the book we have a cast of characters that come to their cabin and pretty much lock them up inside and tell them that the end of the world is coming and it is up to them to save it. So off the bat, premise really good. Writing really good. I enjoyed Paul Tremblay's writing. This was my first book that I read by him. I thought that the characters that he created were all very unique and awesome to listen to because uh, I let it listen to it on an audiobook and I thought that the family dynamic was great. The, like I said, the closeness of the family was awesome and the story progressed very nicely. It wasn't really like twisty or turny but it was I would say a thriller slash horror book and it was really good for this readathon and it was actually one that Lala had read and recommended before so I thought it worked out. I ended up giving this a four out of five stars though because the ending wrapped up not really well for me. I think that there could have been more something or maybe I was just looking for a bad ending and it wasn't necessarily bad. I don't know but I just there's something about the way it wrapped up that I didn't particularly like and I think that it was Paul Tremblay's goal to end it like that and make you feel unsatisfied in a way but for me it just made me feel a little mad when I finished the book so for that I, I bumped it down a little bit and there was just I didn't really like some of the flashbacks I didn't think they were needed and uh, it was told in three perspectives which was fine but it's not necessarily my favorite considering considering the atmosphere but actually now that I'm thinking about it it was fine I, I actually enjoyed it in this book so I gave it four out of five stars it was good definitely would recommend it. And then the last book I read for Spookathon, I buddy read with my friend Ariel. I will link her channel down below and <laughs> I'm sure she realizes that my reading spiral was going down because I was falling behind on our page pages that we were supposed to read every day but I did finish it 
by Monday of the next week. So I did finish it. I just had to sit down and do it and not be overwhelmed with all the other things I had going on. But that was The Death of Mrs. Westaway. Oh my god. The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. I definitely think this it was Ruth Ware's best book up to date before The Turn of the Key. I think everyone is saying that as her best book. So I think her progression has been going pretty good. I definitely saw better plot and writing in here so I can agree with that. This follows our main character Harriet or Hal is who they what she calls herself and she is kind of down on her luck and she's kind of hoping for a miracle so to speak. And she gets this letter in the mail that is addressed to her and it says that her grandmother has died and she should come to the funeral and she has like an, you know, she has, she has money that she could be getting out of this. But according to her birth certificates and papers from before, her grandmother's been dead before she was born. So... She doesn't actually believe that this letter was addressed to her. But she decides to go anyway and see if she can get some money out of this. And things turn around for her and what she thought was just going to be a little scam turns into much more of a mystery than she was thinking it would turn into. So I enjoyed reading this in the chunks actually. By about probably this far into the book though, I would have probably sat down and finished it if I wasn't buddy reading it. Just because I was getting to the point where I would stop and be like, okay, I want to know what's going on. But I knew the twist. Like, I saw the twist coming from very far ahead in the book. So, well, okay, one of the twists. One of the other twists I probably would have seen coming if I was reading it in one sitting. But I think because I had chunked it up it wasn't as easy to understand. Anyway, so the one twist I saw coming so that was a little disappointing and I mean I like I said there were this was better than Ruth Ware's other books. I liked her writing style in it. I liked Harriet as a character. I thought she was really well written and the family dynamic of the Westaways was um interesting to say the least and I didn't really enjoy reading about it but it was a fast-paced book. I got through it, like, I would have gotten through it very quickly if it wasn't for the fact that I had was reading it in segments. So I ended up giving it a 3.75. I don't, I can't even really tell you everything good about it, but it, it was good enough that I wasn't just going to give it a 3. But it definitely wasn't good enough to be a 4, so that's what I settled with. And it just... I have not been completely satisfi satisfied with any Ruth Ware book, including this one. So I'm really looking forward to reading The Turn of the Key because I'm hearing it's so good, but I'm also worried I'm going to be disappointed because I've been disappointed, not disappointed per se, but I have not liked, loved any of her other four books. And this is the only one that I am probably going to keep. On my shelves. I've gotten rid of all of the other ones that I've owned because they just weren't great and I didn't need them on my shelves. So that is that one. So those are the five books I read this month. I probably talked a little long-windedly on them but I'm sorry. There's only five books and this is almost 20 minutes already so <laughs> anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this mostly chill wrap-up because I'm still tired and just getting used to the swing of things. I'm back at work this weekend. It's just not fun. So if you've read any of these and agree with my ratings or want to talk about them, comment below, send me a message on one of my social medias. I'd love to discuss because I could definitely use some bookish friends to talk to or let me know or link your videos below for your October wrap-ups because I would love to watch them when I get time. I have not been watching a lot of booktube, I will admit, because I've been so busy. But I think a lot of people have actually been busy at the end of October and beginning of November that I'm seeing. So I guess it's not really out of character. Thank you guys again for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video or any of my other videos, make sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button so you can see more content in the future. I do have some videos planned for November. 
I can't promise a lot though because I don't know how much time I'm going to have to read but hopefully I can get some good content up for you guys to enjoy. So thank you guys again for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!